Hi guys, welcome. My name's Tom and in this video I'm going to give you some of my thoughts and my theory on developing a style and finding our own artistic voice. And alongside this I am also going to show some of my paintings over the years and at the end I will talk you through a series of paintings and a time lapse to show you all of this theory in action. Let's have a look. One of the most commonly recurring topics that comes up when I chat to other artists and when I'm teaching is wanting to find a style and often a frustration because people feel like they don't have a style or further still actually they just don't like their style, they're aiming for something different. I think we're all in pursuit of our own style and this is an admirable pursuit because of course we want to say something with our art and something that is meaningful to us. More recently though, I've been really thinking about what this actually means and also how do we develop our own style. And in doing so, I started to realise that maybe using the word style, whilst it's still relevant, it's not as accurate as using the phrase artistic voice in getting to the bottom of people's uh, and my own frustrations. And also, I think using this gives us a slightly clearer pathway in discovering this kind of elusive aspect of painting. For example, our style, I think, is really how we put down the paint, the way we make the marks, the physicality of how we use the medium. The same way that one person's signature or handwriting looks different to someone else's, even though they're essentially writing the same thing. Um, so this can be unique and it's still a big part of our art, but it's not the only thing. And it certainly isn't the thing that so many artists I know are finding the most frustrating. You know, in classes where, say, all 12 students paint the exact same subject, we always end up with 12 completely different paintings. And regardless of experience level, each with a recognisable style. In fact, I would say, whether you've been painting 20 minutes or 20 years, <laughs> you already have a style. Um, you might not like it, but you do have one. Our voice, though, could be what we are trying to say, or maybe even our underlying artistic ethos. Uh, what do you see in the subject and want to bring out? What do you want to show other people? And how do we want to say this beyond just the physicality of the medium? So I guess the line between the two could be a little bit blurry, but for the sake of argument, let's keep these two things, style and voice, kind of separate. Then we can look at how searching for our artistic voice could be a more useful way to think about things. Let's call style then the way we make our marks and put down the paint. This is our signature with the brush. Then our voice is the idea we are wanting to communicate and the way in which we do it. And actually above all that really this is the vision that we have for the artworks that we want to create. And as time goes on, I've started to see the frustration around finding a satisfying style. In most cases, it's actually a frustration that there is a big gap between our artistic vision and then the actual outcome of the painting. So in this case, we are frustrated not by our style, but by a feeling that we are not expressing ourselves in the way we want to. We feel that we are not getting across what it is we want to say visually. Our artistic voice is too quiet or it's kind of stuck or we are not able to kind of meet our artistic vision. Painting is a visual language, so let's compare it to a spoken one. If we go to a place where we do not speak the language and we just kind of throw our arms around and we shout loudly, we are most likely not going to make a huge amount of sense. We won't be able to convey what it is we are desperately wanting to say. And then similarly, if we just dive into chucking a load of paint around without any thought whatsoever for the visual language of painting, we most likely will not be able to get across our vision. We might find we get across something, but it will probably be purely by chance. Now, we learn some basic vocab, some phrases, some grammar, some sentence structure, etc. And we are then better equipped to get across what it is we want to say. But we'll still likely come up against much frustration when we can't fully express ourselves. And we may often not have the right words, pronunciation, understanding or just general experience to truly get across or meet our vision. So we need to learn and develop all of these things in order to express ourselves fully. This could be the equivalent in visual language of composition, learning to see and draw accurate shapes, understanding tonal values, colour, edges, all of that sort of thing. I do talk about the five basic principles of painting in this little series of videos here. 
So the bottom line is that the more we focus on these foundational principles of the visual language of painting, the better we can say what it is that we want to say, the better we can express ourselves, the more clear our artistic voice becomes, and therefore the closer we can get to kind of meeting our own artistic vision. A quick side note, the more accomplished we get with a language, the more we can break the so-called rules. So we can throw in our own flair, create our own shorthand and slang and kind of funny turns of phrase, all of which is our style. It's our personality and it's an expression of who we are as individuals. And painting is exactly the same. Our style, our voice and our vision are all born out of these foundational principles and then applying them over and over again. Very finally, of course, the subjects we choose and the techniques we pick up and make our own are all part of this too. And our style, voice and vision often will develop slowly over time. And of course, they're not actually a final destination. They will always continue to evolve and change as we do. And finding all of these is kind of our artistic journey. So don't forget to actually enjoy that journey and don't be too hard on yourself because as painters, we are all searching and pushing. And this is part of the joy of painting. So now I'm gonna talk you through a series of my own recent paintings and my thought process with each one in pursuit of what it is I was trying to say, my artistic vision. And then I'm gonna finish up with a time-lapse of the final painting in this little run. This will also be a great opportunity to look at the fact that there will be paintings that you don't like along this journey. And whilst disappointing, this is very much an important part of our artistic development. And this is gonna to lead to a second video out soon on our perceived failures and why they're so important. And also why watercolor is so great for failures. Let's have a look at the paintings. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do here is take you through a series of five paintings I did over the course of two weeks, all of owls. And this is a great example to look at my kind of thought process going from one painting, taking what I've learned, what I want to keep, what I want to change, moving forward into another painting. And this allows a very kind of quick evolution of ideas and development of our painting. Two weeks is a pretty small period of time, but I think the, the overall kind of thought processes and what I'm looking for can be translated over a much longer period of time and, this, and work out where are we hitting our artistic vision and where are we falling down a little bit on what we want. So the first thing I always talk about, I'm very careful with myself to talk about the things that I like and I would take forward. So I like the overall pose of the bird. Uh, I quite like the colours, like the contrast of kind of warm and cool. I really love the texture that I managed to create in there. That's definitely something I want to take forward. And I really like the way that the background in places kind of fuzzes and softens wet and wet into the bird itself. When it comes to things moving forward, I try to stay away from using the language of what don't I like and focus more on what would I change moving forward. One thing that really helps me is to go through these five principles of painting that I looked at in another video, uh, which is composition, drawing, tone, colour edges and texture. So the composition and the drawing elements I'm perfectly happy with. Where for me things are let down a little bit is the tonal values and the light and shadow. Everything has the kind of the same weight of tone. There's not, you know, this side of the face has exactly the same amount of light and shadow as this side of the face. There's very little kind of form going on. Everything has the same level of darkness on it and everything is a little bit heavy. Uh, in terms of dark, there's no kind of nice light areas that kind of feel fresh and, and lively. Everything's a bit overly rendered and everything's rendered to the same level of detail. So everything's kind of competing for our attention. I'd like to see much softer, lighter, kind of fuzzy areas. This area is far too heavy. This area is far too heavy for what I was trying to achieve. Overall, I like the kind of soft edges and the hard edges. What I'd like to see more of is kind of um, there's not really anywhere where I've got a light part of the bird against a light part of the background. So we're kind of missing a particular type of edge there. So those are all of the things that I would change moving forward. Let's have a look at the next one. I gave a lot of attention to um, trying to really focus on creating a lit area and a strong shadow area and making the strong shadow area much softer, um, far less detail in there not too heavy and then allowing some sharper edges a little bit more detail and a stronger kind of orangey color where the light's hitting in the face so those are the things i really like i also tried to recreate some aspects of the texture 
that I liked from the last bird. Uh, so I, I brought all of that forward and as a result I was happier with many aspects of this. Again we have to be kind of uh, always analysing our paintings so that we can evolve and move forward. So let's kind of go through that checklist of things I might change or what if I tried this. So again composition I quite like. The drawing element of this uh, there wasn't too much to focus on it was really just getting this area here correct. So tonal values much much happier with this one. As I said getting that light and shadow much happier with it. Uh, I probably could have got away with less of these dark heavy marks in here. It would have been nice to have kept things a little bit lighter and a little bit fresher. So that's something I'm going to focus on moving forward. Um, so it would be keep the softness but go a little bit less heavy with some of the deep darks. In terms of the colour, really like the contrast of the cool colour here and the warm colour here. That really works for me. Possibly the colours started to get a little bit muddy and overworked for what I was trying to achieve. I just about managed to keep them fresh uh, and lively but possibly I should focus, especially in this area too, on keeping those colours a little bit cleaner and a little bit more vibrant. In terms of edges, I actually really like the, the balance of edges I managed to achieve here. I've managed to get some lovely soft kind of wet into wet edges here, in the shadows especially, and then some much sharper, harder edges in here. So I feel that there's a nice balance of edges. Again though, the, the only edge I'm missing is really a light edge against a light area. Uh, so that's something to th I wanted to think about kind of moving into the next one. So let's take all of that, move it into the next painting. There are some things that I liked in this, but overall this painting did not work. You know, we, we learn lots from our failures and I learned a huge amount from this one. But first of all, I did actually really like the way that I created this really nice light side and then we had this really lovely strong shadow side. I liked that it was generally a very harmonious, warm colour scheme with just a little bit of coolness in this area. Again, I thought that contrast of kind of warm and cool worked really well. But overall, it absolutely, for me, didn't work and there were quite a few different reasons. Let's run through them all. So composition, it's a bit of a clumsy composition. The bird, for my liking, is a bit too far over to the left-hand side. What that does is take this huge mass here um, and just puts it almost bang in the middle of the painting. Uh, it's a big area of similar tone, bang in the middle of the painting, so compositionally not the best idea and the drawing element is okay but again you know this is just a big clunky slightly ugly shape that doesn't really have much form to it and I think that is a big part of the problem here uh, and I could have made a little bit more of the way that the head and the neck kind of interact with each other and done something a bit more interesting uh, with that so I think there were overall the drawing is okay it looks like an owl but there are definitely areas where I could have been a bit more thoughtful about it. Tonal values um, are good in the end and this comes down to texture actually in the medium itself is this area and you can probably see uh, in the video but actually in person this area has got a horrible kind of overworked very heavy very muddy feel to it it just simply because I didn't go dark enough the first or second time and therefore I had to keep putting more and more layers on to get the contrast that I wanted so one of the big things that I learned from the last two that I was going a bit too heavy a bit too dark in the shadows so this time I tried to go a little bit lighter in the shadows but as a result I went too light the bird didn't have any feeling of form on it so I then had to commit to going much darker but by this time I was on to like layer three or four that's why we've got this horrible muddy overwork look. I do actually like the way that all of the edges are very soft in this area and the branch kind of disappears into the background which in turn disappears into the bird. Uh, we've got dark against light edges here, we've got light against dark edges, we've got dark against dark edges but again the only thing that I don't have it would have been nice to have like an area of light in the background here. Um, so a lot to learn from this one and to take forward and when you have one that doesn't work I think trying to get back on the horse as quick as possible is absolutely the best thing to do. Uh, I appreciate for everyone that isn't as simple as just getting on with another painting straight away or the day after. We all have different responsibilities but if you can um, analyse the one that doesn't work, not be too disheartened by it and just um, take what you've learned into the next one and do it as quick as possible, always a good approach. I'm starting to hit upon the sort of thing that I'm after. So. Um, there's loads of stuff I like, I'm managing to recreate all of this texture in this area. I like the kind of abstract nature of this area here and this area here. Um, I'm trying to purposely 
leave some white edges of the bird against some white background so we've got light against light that's something I was trying to recreate from the other one but also trying to keep areas where you know the background kind of merges softly into the bird and areas of the bird kind of all just softly merge together you know the chest the tail blends into the underside blends into the face so that is all stuff I've taken from the previous ones what I'm much happier with here is that I've got to find the balance of pushing the shadows dark enough but not too dark and more so keeping the light areas really nice and light and fresh and loose uh, so the tonal aspect of this was much better uh, I probably could have made a bit more here this is a bit of a straight line and really it would have been nice if the head had cut in and the body cut back out and then cut back in again so made it created a bit more variety and interest there I uh, really like the textures of the paint and the freshness of the paint, didn't overwork the paint. I like the overall colour scheme, really like the shot of bright green in there, that's something I might take forward. Uh, and I like the kind of cool muted colours of the bird. I think the only thing that I would change moving forward is that both sides of the face are kind of have a similar level of shadow on it. And it would have been nice if I had kept this area here and the eye and this area here. If I'd kept those areas just a little bit lighter in tonal value relative to the nice strong shadow shape, it would have just made it a bit more interesting, given a stronger feeling of light, given a little bit more form. So that's something to take into the next bird. So let's have a look at the very final painting in this series. OK, so the first wash, I'm leaving it very, very light. Loads and loads of whites of the page, everything very, very soft, slowly dropping in slightly more saturated colours to make the marks. I know that I want the background to flow into the bird itself. I've also got this lovely contrast that I really liked of the cooler colours versus the warmer colours. I really like the abstract background from a lot of the other birds uh, and that kind of brighter greeny colour from the grey bird. I let all of that dry, uh, enjoy the texture in the background too and now I'm really focusing on creating a very strong shadow side on this side of the bird and a real softness and letting all the colours flow together and then I'm purposely keeping this side of the bird much much lighter not as dark and much sharper so we've got that contrast of light and shadow uh, and kind of sharpness and softness I'm trying to keep the the chest area and the body of the bird very very simple not too heavy a nice kind of feeling of a light side and a shadow side a variety of edges letting the colors from the background blend and bleed into the color of the bird all of this taken from the way that i've analyzed the previous paintings uh, and really trying to keep it very simple then it's just a case of basically knocking in the eyes trying to keep the shadow side still nice and soft and very simple trying to keep the light side much lighter a little bit sharper and nice and clean I finally kind of started to get at what I was after. We had that strength of colour that I really wanted, that nice clean, vibrant colour, warm versus cool. I was really keen to keep one side of the face much lighter and brighter and throw the other one into a strong shadow. Within that strong shadow, I wanted things to be much softer, much more wet into wet and much more blurry. The same on the body here. I was very keen that I wanted the background colours to have texture to them, which they do have, have an abstract nature and some lovely bright, vibrant colours, in this case turquoise. But I was also very keen that some of those background colours kind of melted and flowed into the bird. There's still plenty to analyse here, there's plenty that I would want to improve. I still didn't really get a lot of those kind of light against light edges. Definitely something to think about moving forward and that seems to be a recurring theme uh, and something to work on. And I probably could have exaggerated the, the kind of the drawing element of this a little bit more. You almost get the sense that the head is kind of turning and kind of jutting back from the body a little bit. And I think I could have exaggerated that even more and given it even more character. I could have moved the head even further this way and moved the body even further that way. But overall, I think that's a great example of all of the ideas from the previous ones kind of accumulating in this one. Links to all of the different places you can find me, including my Patreon teaching channel, are in the description below. You will find links to the much longer version of the final painting that I showed you in the time lapse. Until next time, guys, happy living. Happy painting and I will see you in the next video.